Yes, we've got another former Celt on the Celtic View podcast this week and a former league winner, a man that scored a crucial goal in the match in 2012 to win the league away to Kilmarnock, plus lots of other memories as well, which we're going to go back on at the moment. And I'm absolutely delighted to say I'm joined by Glenn Leuvens. Glenn, how are we? And thank you so much for coming on to the Celtic View podcast. Oh, you're welcome. No, uh, I'm good. Um Getting older, as we all do, uh, still involved in football a little bit. So, um, no, it's all good. Thank you for having me. See, you say you're getting older, but you've still got one of the best hairlines in football. So that's that's staying strong. Uh, that's 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 not hard in Scotland, yeah. <laughs> you're retired now, Glenn. Um, just tell us a little bit about what you're up to in retirement these days. Yeah, well, I retired uh, about three and a half years ago. Um, it was a strange time, obviously, with Corona. So uh, nothing, uh, uh, nothing happened a lot after that. Um, at the moment, I'm doing a little bit of scouting for for an agency, um, which is which is good. Um, a lot of freedom, um, but also. I, I I go to all the games and still involved with football, which is the main thing for me. Um, and there's parts of this I, I really like. So, um, yeah, the, f- the future as well is, is looking good. Superb. That's great to hear, Glenn. Now, we're obviously, we have you on to look back on your Celtic career. Four years from 2008 to 2012, you won each of the domestic honours, a league, a league cup and a Scottish cup. But let's go back to the start and you signing for Celtic. Tell us how the move came about. Yeah, I was uh, playing um, playing for Cardiff at that time. Um, I think we, we even had a, a friendly against each other. Uh, I think it was in, I believe, in in Portugal. Um, and I, I I had a really good game. Uh, at the time, there were a few teams interested. Um, then my agent came with with Celtic, and um, yeah, from then on it went quite quick. Um, I always liked Celtic as a as a club, a traditional club, uh, best jersey in the world. Uh, so for me, it was uh, from then on quite quite quickly decided that I wanted to join uh, Celtic. Yeah, so basically you only signed because of the jersey, yeah. <laughs> no, not not at all. And like I said, it's a traditional club. Um, always um, some Dutch people, f- you know, uh, went before me to to Celtic. So that's why I, I you know, I always followed uh, Celtic as a, as a team, and it's something that I want to be part of. In terms of Dutch players that had played for the club, there was one at the club at that time as well, Jan Venegut of Hesslink. Was he somebody that you spoke to at all before signing for Celtic? Not, not per se. No, um, you know, nobody had to tell me about Celtic. I knew, I knew um, what they were standing for. Like I, like I said, I, I watch a lot of the games um, on TV. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's. You know, this club is a rich history and a lot of uh, players from Feyenoord went before there. So, um, and, and it was more them that told me to, to go. What players were they that played before for Feyenoord? Yeah, you know, like uh, Reggie Blink and stuff like this. Uh, all the Feyenoord players that p- played there. On um, Hoydonk, you know, uh, these type of players that went there before and uh, that you know they, they all they all had good um, you know stories to tell about about Celtic. So no, like I said, when Celtic came, it was uh, it was an easy choice for me. So then, obviously, you sign for the club. You come in. Gordon Strachan was a manager at that time in two thousand and eight. He seems like somebody that was a a bit of a character as well. What was he like when you first signed for the club? And everybody usually has a Gordon Strachan story. So is there anything that comes to mind when you think of him? Yeah, listen, I liked I like Gordon Strachan uh, as as a manager, but he, he could be sometimes a yeah, a little angry man. Uh just to say if things didn't go well. Um I, I remember one one time I think we were 
were drawing at home or something and he came in and he, the first thing that he had in his hand was a plum and he chucked it through the whole uh, to the whole dressing room and he said ah, this plum is tasting <laughs> something like this you know so that that's like a, a typical going strike and uh story uh about you know he could switch quite quickly um to an uh, to an angry man but uh, like i said i like him a lot as a as a manager sometimes this is needed did anyone get hit by that plum i think uh, mcmanus had to duck away otherwise he would have uh <laughs> he, he would have uh, hit it yeah for sure <laughs> i would love to have been a fly in the dressing room at that time to see to see instances like that. Um, in terms of the players as well, when you first came into the club, just in terms of your initial few days when you signed for a new club, you're getting to know new teammates and getting to know new systems, but what were the teammates like at that time? And were there any characters as well in that dressing room? Of course, in every in every in every team you have a few characters, you know. I remember that when we played a the friend, the friendly uh, in preseason when I was still playing for Cardiff, that that me and uh, Scott Brown, um, yeah, we had a go at each other. So, you know, then I I, I signed for Celtic. So uh, he was the first one that I I thought I was gonna go to and, and you know see how he is. But in the pitch he was yeah like an angry man. But off the pitch he was the nicest guy in the world. So um, that set the tone straight away for me that I knew that, you know, I would come in a, in a good group of, of guys. Um, you know, you had your, your chirpy Aiden McGeady, you had your Arthur Borg, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, you had some characters with, uh, with Robbo and, and, and Hardly. So, um, yeah, it, it was a good uh, group of, uh, you know, guys in, in, in the, the squad at the time. Did Scott Brown remember your little altercation together when you went up to see him? Of course, you. It was only like, it was only like two or three weeks before that. So, you know, I, I think I tackled him, and then after that, he came chasing me all game. Uh, I think, I think he was in the wall, standing in the wall, and I, I on purpose, I went standing next to him, and then he was like pulling on my armpits and stuff like that. Um, but when I uh, see him, when I signed, he. Uh, he kind of apologized and said, uh, you know, I'm a big softy off the pitch, so uh, it was all good. <laughs> That's brilliant. And you mentioned some of the characters there. A lot of guys, it seemed like they were probably playing practical jokes every day and, and up to no good. Is there anything that comes to mind from that particular team of things that people would do and play pranks on one another? Um, well, the... Not not so much them, but I remember the young guys uh, at the time. They were they were something else, man. You had uh, Simon Ferris and uh, Paul Paul Pocares. They were two characters. Uh, they were only young coming through, and yeah, the stuff they pulled off it was it was incredible. Um, you know, I can tell you one one maybe one story about them. Um, I think we were in, in pre-season somewhere in, in the hotel and I, I, I honestly don't know how I, how I ended up in their room. I think maybe, the, the, you know, the, these in, in between doors or something like this and we were like staying next to each other. Anyway, they they ordered room service. So Parquettes was laying in the bed, like butt naked, but the, the blanket over him. Uh, so the guy came in with the, the tray of food uh, with the bill in the hand, and um, Pocetta said, "Yeah, put the food there." So, you know, he put the food there, and at that time, Sam Ferris came butt naked as well into the room, and they were like wrestling naked. It's is the funniest thing you ever see. And the guy was standing there with the bill, like, "What should I do?" And it's one of the the funniest things I've ever seen, uh, you know. And this this. These are the kind of things they, they used to do. And it was, yeah, those two were kind of quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> are you just standing there watching all this I, Yeah, they, like I was there, but I, I, I maybe they, they, they noticed, notified me. Also. I don't know why I was there, but I witnessed it all. And it was, it was one of the funniest things. Yeah. And you had your clothes on, yeah? <laughs> I, I, listen, I was fully dressed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, brilliant. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Um, let's get in a little bit of football, actually, if we can now. I think we've had a, a good couple of stories there. Um, yeah, and nowadays you can't get away with it. Huh? And, <laughs> I know, I can imagine. Um, yeah, in terms of some of the, the football now, Glenn, um, when you, you first come in, you had your, your career previous to that, you were successful with Feyenoord, you were successful with Cardiff, you were just in the... Um, FA Cup final as well, weren't you? Um, just before that. So when you came into Celtic, what were your sort of initial reactions of the the standard of the group, and what were you kind of hoping to achieve when you first came in? No, of course, they, we had a very good uh, group of players. You had players like uh, Nakamura, who, who were superb. You know, with uh, with Jan Fenerhoy, a lot of. Um, a lot of experience up front. Uh, you, you had uh, in the back. You had your McManus and and Caldwell, who were you know also internationals. So, um, you had McGeady on the wing. You had Scott Brown in the middle of the park. Uh, yeah, we had a very you know it was a very good group of uh, of players. Um, uh, so yeah, the standard was quite good. Um, in my first year, it was a little bit up and down because uh, um, you know I had to. Fight myself into the team, which uh, Gordon Strachan was honest to me about uh, about in the beginning. He said, "Listen, we have uh, Steve McManus and and, and Caldwell, um, which were my two best players last year." I said, "No, no worries. You know, I'll, uh, I don't mind a bit of competition." So, you know, it took me maybe four or five months to get myself uh, settled in the team, and uh, yeah, you know, so it was it was good for me. You got off to an absolute flyer when you did start playing. I think your debut goal was against Livingston and then you scored winners against was it Inverness and Hibs in back-to-back -back weeks as well. So Yeah, I think I scored like three or four goals in my first six games, seven games. So, uh, something like that, yeah. I, uh, I went off to a very good start indeed. Yeah, so having had such a good start at that moment as well, you must have felt so confident. Yeah, of course, but I don't get my confidence out of scoring goals. You know, I'm a I'm a defender, and uh, I get more joy of of keeping clean sheets. Of course, it's nice, you know, once in a while to to score for sure. But my main my main job was defending, and and you know that's why I got a lot of joy out of keeping clean sheets. And that season as well, we played in the Champions League. I think our group was. Man United, Villarreal and Alborg as well. I'm sure that would have been a big part maybe in you joining the club, but what was that experience like, experiencing the Champions League as a Celtic player? Yeah, of course. Um, it, was, it was something that, uh, you know, I, I played once before at, uh, at Feyenoord in the Champions League. And, um, and, when, I, and when I joined, yeah, you guys qualified for, for the Champions League. So it was a, yeah, a big bonus, uh, obviously. Um, if you guys didn't play for the Champions League, I would have still uh, come to the club. But it was uh, yeah, a big, big extra for me to, to show myself in the big stage. That Man United team as well was an absolute joke. Rooney, Tevez, Ronaldo, yeah. Scholes, all the best players. What was that like? Yeah. I remember the, the away game. You know, we played uh, Ronaldo, Rooney and, and Berbatov up top. And then I think after 70 minutes, they brought Tevez and Nani on. And, uh, you know, like, oh, come on, guys, give us a break, you know. <laughs> it was quite tough already. And then they Put some fresh meat on, and yeah, it was it was a it was a great team at that time. <laughs> yeah, was that maybe one of the best teams you came up against, and maybe Ronaldo at that time one of the best players you came up against? Yeah, of, co of course. You know, I played in Spain as well, so um, you know, we played a f uh, played against Barcelona at that time with you know uh, where they won everything, um, but they they came came close to that team, yeah, for sure. You said that season was a little bit up and down. Um, we didn't win the league, but one thing we did win was the League Cup final in the February in the match against Rangers. I want to go through your memories of that game and take us actually into the week before a big cup final because we've got one coming up as well against Rangers later on this month as well. So take us, what's the week like 
of a League Cup final when you know you're going to be playing a derby match? Yeah, well, listen, the derby always brings a lot of attention, uh, you know, with itself, um, especially uh, if it's a cup final, you know. It's probably not, a, not only the week before, but two weeks before leading up there, you know, everybody all want to make sure we win it. Everybody wants to make sure they have a ticket uh, to go to these games. So, yeah, it's always a bit... For me, it was always a bit hectic uh, leading up to these kind of games. And I'm I'm a kind of guy that, you know, I like my peace and quiet, which was sometimes tough uh, with these games. But, yeah, this is the kind of game you, you know, I joined Celtic for. So I was, uh, yeah, I was deadly excited. What's it like being a Celtic player in the city of Glasgow in the week leading up to a game like that as well. Did you ever have any instances of bumping into sets of fans on, on both sides? And, yeah, yeah and of course. Of... I, I, I don't I don't think you find a player that that this not happen to. You know, of course when you go to the city or pick up your kids from school and there's always one side that cheer you up and one side that give you a little, you know, little stick. So this is part of of, of being a Celtic player, and uh, you know you should you should, you know, deal with this. It's not a problem. Um, and lucky we we won this game. So uh, it's not only the week before, but the week after as well, um, which uh, a little bit of bragging right after that. <laughs> And that was actually your first appearance in a derby match, that final. So in the week kind of leading up to it, in the days leading up to a game like that, maybe when you know you're going to be playing, are there other players in the team, your likes of Scott Browns, that are in your ear telling you what it's all about and what to expect? Yeah, well, I think the first couple of games we played them, um, he put me on the bench. He said, you know, I want you to feel the the atmosphere and the... You know, and see what's all about. So I already experienced, you know, a couple of um, derbies on the bench. Um, so I know a little bit, you know, what what was expected. Um, uh, so no, it was good. I was ready for it uh, when when the game came, and um, uh, lucky for us, um, we we played a good game and we won it. So Gordon Strachan, what was he like in the the? You told us a story about what he was like. Maybe in the dressing room at half time, but what was he like in the dressing room before a game like that? How would he try and g up the players? Uh, listen, I, I I had so many managers, so many games, and uh, some things, you know, um, you know, it's hard kind of for me to remember because you know I had it a lot of balls as well during my career. So sometimes, sometimes. Uh, Things slipped my memory, but uh, the way I, I I remember Gordon Strachan is that he could explain things very calmly, and then suddenly he would, you know, rally up and you know get very passionate. Uh, for me, this was uh, was Strachan. Um so I'm 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 sure he, he rallied the the boys up for for a win. What are your memories of the actual game itself then? Because it was no no going into extra time. You started at central defence with Steve McManus. I think Dan O'Day was on the left. He then pops up and scores an extra time. Aidan McGeady yeah. scores a penalty yeah. as well to win it. Yeah. No, of course, it was a, it was a close game, um, which, you know, as expected. Uh, so it was a relief to, yeah, no, to score so late on. Um, uh, of course, to, to, to win the game. Sorry. Uh, of the actual game itself, I I don't remember that much. I remember Aiden Aiden McGeady scored uh, the second one. Um, but, but apart from that, this you know I, you you remember sometimes the, the the things after the game, before the game, but the game itself, uh, I I can't remember that much about it. Um, to be honest, uh, I remember I, I remember the the, the national team. Yeah, you know the the manager of the national team from uh, Holland came and watched this game, so that was good for me. Uh, 
and I think I had a good game. So I think after that was my first caller as well for the for the Dutch national team. So that's why this this game, uh, you know, uh, this is the memory that you know stuck to me. Yeah, and then just in terms of the the fixture as well, because we are going to have a League Cup final against Rangers at the end of this month at Hampden Park. 50-50 split. Just in terms of that experience and the atmosphere yeah. of oh, World Cup final you know, occasion. Of, of course, this, this, these are the things that you do remember, you know. Um, just uh, the sheer relief when you score a goal and you see all the supporters that you celebrate with. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of things that that will stick uh, stick with you, and it's it was an unbelievable experience. Something I won't uh, I won't forget. Um, so uh, you know, I'm sure the boys wanna do the same again. Um, to lift up the crowd and the city uh, will be a good experience for everyone. You said there a lot of times you don't remember what happens in the game, but you remember what happens before and after. So after that, you win a cup. Please tell me there was a big night out, and there were some good stories there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's there's always a, a time to to celebrate, uh, you know, um, wins, and especially you know uh, if you win a trophy. So uh, I think we went out uh, in town and uh, uh, with the people that you know um, that are there for you during during the year. So your family, your friends, uh, you know. So uh, yeah, these are, these these are good moments because as a player, you yeah you work hard for it, but sometimes your family have to suffer as well. You know, the traveling and you being away and 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 things like this. So for them, it's nice as well sometimes to to experience this. Yeah, going into the the next season, then Tony Mowbray comes in as manager. Again, a difficult period. Um, you still had a couple of kind of big personal moments, as you mentioned, making your debut um, for the national team. And I remember you scored a, a goal against Hearts in the, the 93rd minute as a, a winner as well. That was a quite a big moment. But again, a difficult season, um, which then follows with, with Neil Lennon coming in as manager. And with him coming in, there was a lot of change in terms of the personnel. I think there was about 11 or 12 players that came in during that summer. But what were your initial reactions of, of Neil coming in as manager and that, that initial team sort of developing? Yeah, well, for me, it was a, it's a strange season because, uh, yeah, I, like, like you said, I, uh, I made my, my debut for the national team, but I also had a lot of, lot of injuries. Uh, I, I remember um, I had... I had like three or four hamstring tests. Um, I remember just before uh, Tony Mowbray got 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 fired, um, I, I was out with with a hamstring tear, and um, I think we we were dropping some points. So he kind of you know pushed me to to play and come on, we need you back. So I forced myself back into it and got injured again. Uh, the same same hamstring and. Then new new Lennon came uh, came in and obviously he said, "Come on, I need you. I need you to play." And um, so uh, again, I think I came back a little bit too soon. Uh, we had a game against uh, Dundee away, I remember. And first half it was fine, um, and second half, I think after sixty minutes again, my my hamstring uh, yeah gave in and that was my season finished uh, basically uh, and with that my chance uh, playing for the world cup so yeah that was kind of kind of a tough year for me um on a you know on a personal note of being injured that much how difficult is that for a footballer and for yourself specifically in those moments when you're living in a different country as well you're not surrounded by all of your your home comforts and you're trying to battle through those injuries when you're watching the team playing every week yeah listen this is part of uh, part of your job but uh yeah it's it's and it was not a like a bad injury you know it's like a muscle tear so sometimes normally it takes four you know four weeks three to four weeks but yeah because i'm 
I'm a type of guy that wants to help the team. So that's why I pushed myself and maybe a little bit too much. Uh, and like I said, I was in, involved at that time with the national team. And, uh, you know, uh, as well from them, I gave, get a phone call from the manager. Listen, if, if you don't play, I can't select you uh, because the World Cup uh, was, uh, was that summer in uh, South Africa where they <laughs> reached the final. So it was like an extra, yeah, level of... Uh, yeah how do i say disappointment not to to be in that squad but hey that's 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 football for you sometimes you have great moments like winning the cup before and sometimes you have these kind of moments where yeah it's tough sometimes to to be a football player let's look at a couple more just kind of happy moments from your time then at celtic and as we mentioned neil lennon comes in as permanent manager there's a lot of change uh, in the football club in terms of the personnel and the squad. That season, we go extremely close to winning the league title, but we do win a Scottish Cup as well. What was it about that team, do you think, that, that changed a little bit to get us that bit closer and then also get a bit of silverware at the end of that season? Yeah, I think I think New Lennon, you know, as a... As... As a player, um, you know, he knew exactly what was needed to um, to win things. And I think he brought this kind of mentality back into the team. Um, you know, this 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 winning and, and fighting uh, mentality a little bit. Uh, and I think that's, that's what needed. I like Tony Mowbray a lot, but sometimes I thought maybe it was a little bit too nice of a person if sometimes as a Celtic coach you need to be uh, a little bit like this and I think Tony Mowbray he lacked a little bit um, yeah this quality and I think I think New Lennon had this uh, and he brought this over to to the team yeah and as I mentioned so many of the players coming in so there was new characters coming into the dressing room Gary Hooper Joe Ledley Charlie Mulgrew what did you make of all those players that were starting to, to come in? And again, there are a couple of guys I've heard before who would be the ones playing pranks and things as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. Listen, as a as, as Celtic, you know, there's always new players coming in every year. Uh, and with that, always players that, you know, add quality uh, in, into the team. So this is something you have to deal with, you know, as a, as a player for, for Celtic. Um, but like you said, there's a lot of, you know, uh, quality added uh, to the team. Um, you know those over those years. So, no, it was good. Uh, still in touch with, uh, you know, with with some of them uh, still. So, no, it was, uh, you know, uh, like you said, a close call in the end. I think um, I remember me being in the stand against uh, Rangers away, and and I think Samaras missed the. A penalty or something like this I could, and that was like a little bit a turning point in the end but hey this is football sometimes you you know you have these decided moments that can make or break uh, the season yeah and we do win the Scottish Cup final that year um, you started in the final of the 3-0 victory over Motherwell so we still ended with a little bit of glory which I think maybe helped us going into the next season as well but what are your memories of playing in, in that kind of Scottish Cup final environment and winning another trophy with Celtic? Yeah, like I said, these you know winning trophies are always nice, and uh, these kind of things stick with you um, um, because, like I said, you 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 train hard every every day to to win things. Uh, so when you do win things and get rewarded in the end, it's a satisfied feeling and also for the fans to because they're there every you know every week, uh, week in, week out. So so also good to to give them something back, uh, a, a joyful moment. There's a couple of brilliant goals in that final. I remember Charlie McGrew's free kick, Ki Sung Young's goal to to kick things off was amazing. It was just a a great day at Hamden, the sun was out and a good 3-0 victory as well. And I suppose the last game of the season for your for yourselves, you might have been able to celebrate it a little bit more afterwards. Yeah, of course. Of course, uh, you know, sometimes, um, you know, during the season, sometimes it's, it's tough because, uh, especially with the, with the 
you know, international games and stuff like this. You you know you have midweek games as well, so sometimes it's not the ideal moment to celebrate things. But yeah, uh, like you said, uh, last game of the season, win uh, win a trophy. Yeah, it, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's we stayed up a little bit later than normally. <laughs> Any memories of, of where you went and how, how late you stayed up? Um, yeah, I, I think we 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 went all together with two two Corinthians, if I uh, if I correct it. And um, yeah, like I said again, you know, we're we're with the whole team, uh, my my family and friends and, and things like this. So uh, it was a good night. Brilliant. Yeah, I say it was a sunny day. I think it's now actually coming back to me. It was pouring with rain when the last goal went in, so maybe my, my cup finals are getting blurred there. <laughs> um, but in terms of going into that next season then, we win the title, we get it back for the first time in four years. What was it about the team in that season you think helped us to go on and actually go one better and lift the title? Well, like you said, uh, the year before, maybe, you know, started things off with uh, New, New Lennon becoming permanent uh, <clears throat> permanent manager and, and um, you know, get his, his own, like, stamp on the on the team and uh, we carried on the, the season after. I remember being a little bit strange season with, uh, um, with Rangers being... Um, deducted points or something like this I can't remember exactly but yeah we ended up uh, winning the league by I don't know 25 points difference something like that so it was a little bit of a weird season but yeah for us it's like you said it was good to to win the league uh, uh, back after all these years and you know um, something that you know I cherish a lot uh, I cherry a lot uh, um, winning because you know I was there four years uh, so you know you had to you had to uh, win the league at least once before before I left Celtic you mentioned it was a bit of a strange season because things didn't start out for us well at all I think at one point we were 12 or 15 points behind going into that game against Kilmarnock where we were then 3-0 down at half time and, and drew it back to three each and from there we really kicked on I remember the game against Rangers at Celtic Park where Joe Ledley scored which seemed to be a, a turning point as well in the season when you think when you try and think back if you can about that season in particular games and moments is there anything that stands out for you yeah pff, listen I, I again I I was I think I I started I started the first ten games something I started well then I again I I got injured uh, again with his hamstring it always always was always my hamstring and it was a I think yeah like I said that a few difficult moments for me at at Celtic but um, I think I I ended up at least with a on a good note, with playing a lot in the last couple of months and and winning uh, winning the league, um, but yeah, for for myself, I was a little bit too much uh, injured um, for my liking. But um, uh, like I said, I was I was really relieved, and I think uh, if you saw my celebration on, you know, uh, when we won the league, um, when I scored the goal, uh, it said it all. It was like a sign of relief. Come on, uh, finally we have it. That game against Kilmarnock, 6 0, where we do win the league, as you mentioned, you were one of the players that scored in that first half. I remember being at that game and it was just incredible. Celtic had three stands, the atmosphere was amazing, the football we played was amazing as well. What do you remember of that occasion? Yeah, well, this is this is one of the few games I do remember uh, playing in. Um, like you said, it felt like felt like a home game. Um, um, I think it was five 0 in the end. Um, so it was yeah, like you said, we're playing some good football, uh, scoring some goals. So it's the kind of game that you know. Um, it's like I said. It felt like a, a relief from all those years that uh, uh, the year before we 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 didn't make it. Also, my first season we didn't quite make it um, on, on a couple of points. But now you know, 
with some good football. Um, we we brought it back to to Celtic, and for me that was like I said a big relief and uh, yeah one of a one of a, my pr proudest moment in football. The atmosphere in that day was amazing at Rugby Park, but you can use that as an example. But just in general, the Celtic fans. How do you remember them and the atmosphere that they would create for the team? Yeah, I have to say uh, I was quite lucky with all my teams that I played for with uh, with the fans. But um, yeah, Celtic were right up there, um, home and away. Um, it was always a, a sellout, and yeah, especially the the Champions League nights, you know, under the lights, it was something amazing. I still get goosebumps, you know, talking about it. Uh, these are the things as, as a player you you, you always remember. Um, and, you know, they, they were there for us in good and bad times. So, no, they're amazing. Um, really, really good. Yeah, I'm sure Celtic fans will always love to hear that. Um, just to Glenn about you, you then leaving the club and after that we're going to go do some quick fire questions which we always do with our, our guests when we get them on. But in terms of, of leaving, you then going that summer to Spain, was it just a case of wanting a new challenge at that stage in your career? Yeah, listen, I, I, I like Celtic a lot as a club but... Um, you know the league at at times. You know you play seven seven times Kilmarnock in one season, and after four years, it, it can be a lot. It can be quite intensive. You know I knew the the Kilmarnock players better than my own my own wife. So um, yeah, I I felt like after four years it was it was time for for a new challenge. And um, although Celtic offered me a, a new deal, but. Yeah, for me, I, I I felt like I needed a new, uh, yeah, new chapter in, in in my career, and that's why I decided to leave. Um, but Neil Lennon at the time he said, "Listen, when you look back, you always regret leaving." And at one point, he was kind of right uh, because hey, I went to Spain and stuff, and and although I had some good experience as well, but I always kind of missed uh, playing for Celtic. Yeah, it's a, it's a club that always just leaves a place in people's hearts, even when they leave. Um, Glenn, let's finish off on some quick fire questions, as we always do when we have a, a guest on. So, some questions on your teammates at the time, or memories, different things like that. So, to kick off with, who was the, the biggest practical joker and the biggest prankster in the squad during your time at Celtic? Yeah, you... you if I have to say one, it's it's Scott Brown. <laughs> In terms of yourself, did you have a favourite goal you scored at Celtic? Um, let me see. Yeah, well, let, let's go for the the one that when we won the league, um, just because because of yeah the game what it represented for me. Yeah, that's a good shout. In terms of other players and the team, who was the one that caught your eye the most? The, the one that was you would say is maybe the best, sort of technically. Uh, for me, that's easy. It's Nakamura. He, when we did boxes, he never, I never seen him gave the ball away once. It's incredible. And if he, if he gave a, if he gave the ball away, it was normally because it was a foul made on him. He was that good. I've heard people talking about Nakamura before, saying they would watch him in training and he'd take 20 free kicks and every single one would just go in the top corner and they're standing there like, I yeah, can't it believe was, what I'm watching. It was incredible. It was funny as well because he never spoke a word English and then we, with the national team, we, we played Japan and he came to me and he said, Hi, Glenn, are you okay? I was like, oh, this guy can't speak English, man. But in the two, three years he was there, he never spoke a word. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I don't know if you had a fine system at the clubs when you were at Celtic, but if you did, is there a player that would get fined the most, or is there a player that got a fine which which made you laugh a lot? I can't. I can't remember. Of course, we had a fine system for sure. Um, but I can't remember. I should because I think the last year. I was in charge of it as well. 
Oh my God. Was was there any, ever anybody yeah. always late to training or things like that? No, I, I, I honestly can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. What about yourself? Did you, did you ever get fined for anything? Yeah, but stupid things, you know, leaving stuff out outside or in the in the dressing room, things like this. Um, you never caught me coming late or anything like this. But um, yeah, normally like like silly things. Who would you say was the strongest player, or the it could be the strongest or the angriest player you played with at Celtic? Bobo Balde, you know, uh, I I remember this story that. I came in in the dressing room and they put my my kit. It was the first day. Uh, they put my kit in in his locker. So obviously, first day I come in quite early. Um, you know, getting changed, and then Big Bobo Baldi came in and he said, "That's my locker," and he took my clothes uh, and he hanged them somewhere else. And I was like, "Okay, Bobo, if you say so." Uh, so I went to the the kit man. I said, uh, "Sorry, but you put me in uh, Bobo Baldi's place. Uh, can you sort it out? Because I don't want him. I don't want to make him angry. Uh, so if I have to go for one, for sure, it's Bobo Baldi. Because I mean, Glenn, you're a big guy yourself, a big rugged centre half. Was Bobo just a different level? Not as big as Bobo Baldi. Trust me. <laughs> he looked. He looked like a like a unit. Uh, You've come out with some brilliant stories, Glenn. Um, I don't know if there's is there anything else that comes to mind because there's been some there's been some great ones already. I'll tell you one. Uh, it was with uh, with a manager, New Lennon, at the time. I remember playing the first nine, ten games, and we won we won all all nine or ten. Uh, then we played Rangers, and um, yeah, we we lost. Uh, it wasn't a good game. The 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 game after after that, um, we were two nil up at home. But me and uh, Mastorovic, we had like uh, one or two moments that, you know, we weren't sure of each other, uh, which caused a little bit of panic. So you know, he came in the dressing room and he's like, <laughs> he said, "What shall I do with you two? And you know, now if I look back, I shouldn't reply. But uh, I said, "Well, you're the manager. You know, you decide what to do." Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, he kind of was. He left anyway. Anyway, uh, he left me out the squad for a couple of weeks, uh, just to make to make a point, uh, which okay, I was upset about, but uh, things happened. And uh, he said, "Okay, Glenn, today you have to do the 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 boxes upstairs. You know, you have to show to all the carpet boxes, show your face." I said, "I don't feel like it. I'm not going." He said, okay, I, that's a fine. I said, okay, you can find me, not a problem. So he said, okay, I find you. So, you know, I think it was a thousand pound or something like that. Uh, so it was, you know, quite a lot of money for just not going to the boxes. So I was I was already So that made me even more. And then he was like, hoo hoo, are we going on a night out with Glenn's money? So that So I thought, how can I get him back? I said, okay. So I bought this, I think it was, at Christmas time, so I bought this Christmas big, big bag with lights on it and stuff, and I gave him thousand pounds in coins, <laughs> and I put this on his uh, desk and I said, "Here, take this out and the night out," and that kind of broke the ice between us again. Uh, after that, it was quite good again. That is a brave move because that goes either one or two ways: either he likes it like he did, or he gets even more annoyed. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, he took it uh, the right way, and I, it was intend, intended a little bit like that to break the ice because you know I, I wanted to play back again, and uh, it was a good solution in the end. And uh, like you said, it's a good story in the end to to tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're here to tell it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here to tell the tale. Just finally, Glenn. Um, when you look back on your whole time at Celtic, just try and sum up, if you can, what memories come to mind and just what your time at Celtic really means to you. Uh, listen, if, if, if I look back at uh, my time at Celtic, overall, it's, it's joy. It's, uh, I met some lovely people. I played for a great club, uh, with, for some great fans, uh, won trophies. Um, you know, my 
my one of my daughters got born there so it's like a, it will always be a special place for me um when i uh, once in a while come back and uh, you know with joy and 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 uh, fond memories of so um yeah nothing but uh, good 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 praises uh, for celtic for me well do come back and, and see us all soon at celtic park and i'm sure the Celtic fans will love hearing all those stories and, and those memories from you, Glenn. Thank you so much for joining us in the Celtic View podcast and taking out time in your day and, and sharing those stories again. It's, it's brilliant to hear it, Glenn, but thank you so much. Thank you for having me.